Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Tech Toys. Uh, today I wanted to show you this really cool operating system that I just now found out about, uh, thanks to ETA Prime actually. Uh, he did a little thing on it, so I wanted to do a little thing on it. Uh, it's called Apple Pi OS, and it's a skin that's over Linux on Raspberry Pi. It's made to look like Mac OS 10. So it's pretty cool. Uh, as you can see there, there's a little notepad that you can pull right down there from the menu up top and you can type notes and things and there's Wi-Fi up there and your sound and your Bluetooth options and all that good stuff. Now this is for Raspberry Pi 4 and it's still in development and uh, I'll link the YouTube channel of the developer in the bottom so you can check them out and check all their videos out and stay apprised of the development process on this. Now there are some bugs and it's not perfect yet but like I said he's continuously working on it so hopefully this will turn out to be a really nice operating system. What we've got here so far is pretty good, actually. And, uh, you know, your internet is detected immediately. You can log into Wi-Fi without doing anything crazy. And uh, it's my understanding that this is based on Ubuntu Budgie. So you've got your app store for that down there at the bottom and all that good stuff. And there are two web browsers that are already installed. You've got Firefox and Chromium. It also has Bellina Etcher installed by default, so you can do a lot of cool things there. Uh, you know, like make your SD cards and all that good stuff from images. And as you just now saw up there, it recognized my Wi-Fi printer immediately without me having to do anything. So I like that a lot, so I can just print right from Wi-Fi. As you can also see there at the top, it has Kodi installed, and it comes with a lot of cool software. Here you've got the LibreOffice suite, you've got Rhythmbox for listening to music, you've got two different software stores, and there's Bellina Etcher where you can burn your own images. That's installed by default. That's really nice. And uh, here is one of the featured app stores. There's a lot of stuff there. Now, if you go into the Snap Store, you might find some things that are mostly made for x86 PCs that won't run on the Pi. That is not the developer's fault. That's simply because you're using a Raspberry Pi and some of that software is written for PC. So just understand that as well. All right, I'm going to get ready to close all of this out and then we'll go ahead and check out some of the other stuff. Here's another of the app stores that comes with Apple Pie OS and I'm gonna get ready to close this out after I show you all the cool stuff you can get there that's the top rated software and uh, here are some of the things that you can get on the other app store that it comes with and let's go ahead and check out the drop down menu and see what all we get here's everything you get in the accessories folder and here's what comes in the game folder that has Dolphin installed. And uh, you can install a lot of other emulators and stuff too. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's Chromium and Firefox and uh, BitTorrent Client. There's LibreOffice Draw. And uh, here is all the Office software. You've got the LibreOffice Suite. And there's LibreOffice Math. So if you go to Sound and Video, you have Kodi and Rhythmbox Music Player. You go to system tools and you have all the stuff you need to set your computer up from Wi-Fi to Bluetooth to your display to firmware and uh, your mouse and touchpad and all the stuff that you would want and expect to have. It's right there under system tools. There's what's under universal access and here's the utilities. You've got an archive manager and a calculator and a disk usage analyzer and a character map and all that good stuff. So just kind of looking around one more time. I didn't scroll all the way down, so let me show you a couple of other things here. And here's PyKiss. This comes installed automatically. This allows you to run certain games, uh, install certain games. You can install other emulators like DOSBox. It's extremely handy. And uh, yeah, uh, after it installs, you have to restart it one more time. And here is your menu where you can you know, configure your Pi, you can overclock it, you can install or compile games and install emulators, and uh, you can do all sorts of stuff here. But here's some of the stuff that you can do, and I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Uh, one thing no one's done yet is check out the internet on this, uh, on this operating system, so let's just go ahead and do that right now. 
uh, to me it seemed like it was pretty smooth as far as surfing on the internet. Now I have the Pi set at stock. It's not overclocked right now. If you overclock it, you could probably do a little bit more. I'm going to pull up my YouTube account and show you that, you know, the internet's nice and buttery smooth, and I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and pull up Retro Tech Toys, and here we are. And I'm click on one of my videos. I'll tell you right off that it does have trouble playing clearly 4K and uh, 1440p and even 1080p, but it will play 720p and 480p without problems. Again, if I overclocked, it might run a whole lot better, but I didn't do that for the purposes of this video. Maybe I'll do that later after some bugs have been worked out, and I'll do another video about uh, the operating system as it progresses. But just wanted to show you that you could watch YouTube on this, but you may have to use lower settings because it does struggle quite a bit with higher settings such as 4K or 1440 or 1080p. And, you know, I kind of expect that, to be honest, especially with an operating system that's still in the early stages of development. Like I said, let's scroll down to 720p and see if it plays. I just want to make sure you guys get a full picture of the capabilities of the operating system so far. But yeah, it starts to play a little bit, but it does kind of struggle, but it's a lot better. Uh, we are skipping quite a few frames there, and we are buffering a lot and all that good stuff. So, what I ended up doing was playing YouTube on 480p, and that actually worked really well. Uh, as you can see, when we try to go to full screen, it struggles, but, you know, it tries. And uh, I'm going to put it on 480p here. And uh, then basically, after it takes a second to buffer and catch up, it plays okay. But uh, that's it for that. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And that's about all I have for you today. I just wanted to show this to you guys so you could download it and check it out. And let me know what you think in the comments section. I really appreciate you guys for watching Retro Tech Toys. I'll have some bigger, more detailed videos coming soon. I just saw the video for this on ETA Prime's YouTube channel. And I wanted to check it out myself and maybe show one or two things that he didn't show. And that's all I've got here. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.